everyone, welcome to Waz episode one. Last time was more of a pilot episode. And you know what we didn't do? We didn't introduce ourselves. My name is Jimmy. I work here at Tech Syndicate now. And they hired me to be an editor, but we're more of like a, a jack of all trades here at Tech Syndicate. We kind of all do everything. It helps split the workload. It makes it a lot easier. My name's Pistol. A lot of you are already familiar with me, but he introduced himself. I'll introduce myself. Pistol. Another thing to get to know us so you can get a kind of feel for what we like in video games. We'll say what our favorite games of all time are, is. And uh, what's your favorite game of all time? My favorite game is a lot of people's favorite game. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, my favorite game of all time. My favorite game of all time, Super Metroid. What do you like about Super Metroid? Everything. 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 There's a lot of things I like I about something. I love the way it looks. I love the gameplay. I love how it feels when you're controlling Samus. I love the sound effects. I love the music. I love the story. I love everything. It's like the perfect game. That's pretty much what I like about Zelda 2. And I have a really funny story about Ocarina of Time. I actually quit playing that game. I think it was like seventh grade. I quit playing it for like a year and a half, and then I went to my cousin's house, and they had the game there. And you know why I quit playing the game? The Water Temple. There's a little pillar in the middle of the Water Temple. I'm sure you play that game. Mm -hmm. You know how you can raise the water levels, and there's like this little tunnel underneath the, yeah. in the middle. I didn't know that was there. I wonder. I must have like raised and lowered the water levels like a million times, <laughs> and I never knew that was there. And then I went to my cousin's house, and they're like, "Oh, it's it's right down there." And I was like, "All right." So I ended up being in the game like two days later. <laughs> The days before Google. Yeah, there was there was no internet back then, kids. I mean, there Times. was, but dial up. Ugh. Life was hard. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. So since we're going to be drinking in each episode that we do, and at the end of last episode we said what we were drinking, but I think people were kind of curious throughout the length of the video, like what we were drinking. So we're going to put in the beginning of the episode what we're drinking, just to start off to ease your curiosity, and I think it would be a nice way to start the episode. So what are you drinking? I am drinking a Berkshire 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 I don't know how to say it Berkshire like the hops it's Berkshire Berkshire got it uh, Brewing Co this is the Draymond's Porter and it's got little horsies on it horsies you got it for the horsies yeah that's the only reason I got it anyway what are you drinking over there I am drinking it's like the same thing as last time yeah but as you can see it's almost out so I'm probably going to be getting a new drink during this episode again pear nectar because it is so Good. It's, it really I, is. I had some. Pear juice is really hard to find for some reason, unless you like drink the canned juice. Yeah. But it's so good. So, pear nectar. Last time I was drinking it with clear rum. This time, I'm drinking it with the dark rum, which is Kraken. As you can see, the I am fresh out. Kraken. Release the Kraken. I killed the Kraken. You killed it. <laughs> I killed the Kraken. It's really good. Recommend it. It's great. All right. And we really appreciate all of you guys' suggestions, everybody. The pilot was more of a test run, and we wanted to see what you guys thought of the episode. And we really wanted to thank Kat from our Tech Syndicate forums for suggesting a lot of good ideas. And because of him, we're going to be having a what to play. Both of us are going to be suggesting a game to play every episode. Yes. So one from me, one for you. And we have very different tastes in games, so it'll it'll be quite the variety, I think. I think that'll be good for you guys. You guys should will enjoy it. So at the end of last episode, we ended off with a question, and the question was, what do you want in a game? You know, something that maybe used to be in games and isn't anymore, or something that you never saw in games that you always wanted. My answer to that question is a survival simulator. I've always wanted a survival simulator, not zombies, okay? Not zombies. Not the forest? The forest, okay, which I am playing. It has still has the zombie feel because I mean even though they're technically not zombies they are tribal people who are like crazy and want to kill you I saw you playing that and it almost reminded me of Resident Evil 4 with like you know, hands coming out of their heads and stuff they have like weird mutations and yeah. I think it's because they're all on an island and they're just Darwinian things are happening but um <laughs> but it still kind of has that zombie feel but you do get to like build a campfire and you hunt your food and yeah. all that stuff so that's nice I, I like that kind of realism but I really want something that's like, if you go into the woods and you're su you survive, like turn that into a video game, what you would really be doing, realistic scenarios, and a game that's going to be coming out, which is in the works right now, called The Long Dark, is the most realistic survival simulator that I've seen to date, that I am so excited for, it looks amazing, look it up, I think it's going to be awesome. I'm definitely going to buy it when it comes out. So you guys gave us a lot of great suggestions on games that you guys would like to play, you, there's so many comments on amazing games. But we picked out our favorites, and the first one is from the Panda64. He commented on TechSyndicate.com, and he said he wants a steampunk-style Skyrim 
slash Elder Scrolls type RPG with multiplayer missions and events slash party play. And you know what? I love this idea because I love Skyrim and I love steampunk stuff. Steampunk stuff is awesome. And you know what? Like that was that's a game that I would love. I would totally love to play a game like that. I'd play it. Yeah. For sure. Like that sounds awesome. I would definitely play it. I this, could get lost in that. Yeah. And this has nothing to do with like what I want like from a game, but I I know everybody out there, everybody wants a Pokemon MMO. I want a Pokemon MMO. You guys want a Pokemon MMO. Maybe not all I of you. I want a Pokemon MMO. Exactly. Pokemon MMO, why hasn't it been made yet? Why? It would be so perfect. You could set up the first one. You don't even need raids or anything. Just have the Pokemon MMO where you're playing it normally, but you can interact with people and fight them along the way, and you can trade with people, and, you, and just play the game. And the first one could be Kanto, the first 151 Pokemon, and that's it. And then the expansions could be all the next games, one at a time. And make it realistic graphics. I don't want that cartoon crap. We've had enough of that. I grew up on this game. I'm older now. If you guys want me to play Pokemon MMO, I want it to be more realistic. I, I can't even tell you how many people I've heard say they want a Pokemon MMO. Let's make it's it like happen. It's like the most demanded MMO I've ever heard. I want that to happen. We need to make it happen. Someone make it. Make it. The next comment that we chose is from Wolf Ben from Tech Syndicate. And he said he would like to see more female lead characters. Which I agree, I mean, there are, there are a decent amount of female lead characters in games these days, but they're not really executed very well, I think. They're just kind of, they're not very dynamic, you know, like their personalities. And their I think the problem with that is that when people make lead female, female characters, they focus too much on the sex appeal. And you know what? I love a sex appeal on the video games just as much as the, any other guy, but I also love the big, strong girl that can, like, wear the full body armor, have a two-handed sword, and just cut people up and... Just destroy people. The Protect your heart, ladies. Exactly. You don't I mean, have to show the cleavage, just armor. Or the torso. Armor like, your organs. It's like an <laughs> armor bra is not going to protect you. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what you're going to say what I was going to say. Say it. The audience is here. Say like, oh, I need to protect my nipples, but I don't have to protect my heart. It's like, that doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, it's like, look at Samus, you know, my favorite game of all time, Super Metroid. Full body. Just, I mean, she's a bounty hunter in outer space fighting some badass stuff. She needs armor and she got it. And she was awesome. No, most people probably didn't even know that Samus was a girl until recently. Yeah, well, those are the people who never play. Yeah, true. <laughs> he also said that he would like to see the resurgence of RTS games. This I really agree with. Because growing up, I played a lot of RTS Me games. Me too, I love I RTS loved games. I loved RTS games. I played all of Warcrafts. I'm not talking about World of Warcraft, okay? Warcraft 1, 2, and 3, the yeah, real ones. Those ones were good. And then there's StarCraft. And the only really new RTS that I know of is, R is StarCraft 2. Like, is there any other new RTSs? I know of Grey Goo coming out, and that yeah. one looks quite amazing. It's from the original creators of the Command Conquer line. Yeah, the Command Conquer. But Conquer's. is there any other ones that are out now? None that are, like, good enough to really be circulated and pe people be excited about, you know? Like, yeah. they're just kind of being forgotten about and companies are really focusing on modern day FPSs. Mm -hmm. And it's really getting old. They're really driving yeah. that into the ground these days, so. But if you like RTSs, um, Grey Goose coming out soon. We made a video on that at PAX East and it looks like it's gonna be great. Well, he also said he, that he would like, in video games these days, our DRM free, which is good, because yeah. <laughs> If you double got, DRM. If you got Watch Dogs on double Steam, DRM. you got that double DRM, you got Watch it through Steam and then through Uplay and yeah, fun. Well, why do they do that? And then also the pre-order DLC or just DLC in general, Yeah. you know, is, is not good for anyone, really. I mean, I like DLC. I'm, I love aesthetics just like anybody else, but don't give us a DLC a week after a game comes out. I mean, come on, that should have came out with the game. Give us at least half a year to a year of playing the game before you bring out DLC. Basic features are now DLC. Animation, DLC. Hot in the game, DLC. You know what that means when DLC comes out that early? Is that they developed that DLC while they were developing the game and then chose to it's take hard. it out, it's separate it, price the game at $60 and be like, okay, now pay for this. More money, more money, more money, more money. That's what it's all about. Yeah. It's so annoying. It's, it's like insulting Gamers, you know, it's just insulting to the intelligence that they do that. It's a horrible, horrible thing. Let's go to our next comment. Rin Slime from Tech Syndicate. He says he wants a sandbox third person RTS where each player controls one unit. He said a lot more, so if you want to see everything else he said, you can go over to our website and check that out. But how does that sound? A third, sandbox third person RTS where you can only control one unit? How is that an RTS? Yeah, it sounds like it's like, how would that work? How, that's not an RTS. It is. There are two games that I know of which are actually 
really fun. The first one kind of died and isn't, it's not really around anymore, and that one is called Savage 2, where it's actually third person and first person, and it plays like an RTS. There's two teams. Each team has a commander. Each commander is in a top-down traditional RTS view where they put down buildings to build up their weapons and things like that. But then each unit, each ground unit of the different classes, they are all individually controlled by one person. Which is actually pretty cool, because then everyone actually has to coordinate. It's not like, oh, you just click this and then all your units go there. Okay. It takes a lot more strategy, a lot more communication to your team, and it's actually really, really fun. But there is another game that is still out these days and very alive and well, and that is called Natural Selection 2. Yeah. And that leads into my what to play. I would say to play Natural Selection 2, because that game has kind of gone under the radar. I've never heard of it. It's really fun. Like, it's so oddly addicting. Sounds fun. I'll have to look it up. But yeah, it, it plays just like how I said Savage 2 plays, except it's all first person. So you're, you know, if you're a unit, you're, you're in the fight, you're right in there, but it still operates like an RTS. It's a lot of fun. So if, Rinse Slime, if you can sacrifice the sandbox element, I would say play Natural Selection 2. That brings us to our next comment, AK Nameless, also from Tech Syndicate. He says he wants an early 1900s setting. Almost like Columbia from Bioshock Infinite. I love that game and the style of that is amazing. Old Victorian style, it's really good. Just like Skin Punk almost. Mm -hmm. Where it's an open world for first person shooter where you can join armies of any country with huge battles like Planet Side 2. That sounds amazing. I would totally play a game like that. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good idea. He went into more detail, so if you want to check that out, go to Tech Syndicate and go to the comments on our previous video and that's where all these are. And the next one that we chose was a comment on YouTube. I think he deleted his comment because yeah, we weren't, we we weren't able to get it word for word, but we did jot down like a summary, a summary of, of what he said. Yeah, and his username is Link Eagle Eclipse Walker. That's a really that's a that's a mouthful. I, he it almost looked more like a Star Wars feel there. Almost. Yeah, yeah, Eclipse Walker is pretty cool sounding. It doesn't really make sense, but it sounds cool. Yeah. And uh, he said what he wants is a JRPG with a Mortal Kombat style combat. That sounds awesome, because I loved Final Fantasy games growing up. And I don't, I don't think there is a game out right now where there's like a battle system where you fight like that. There's no, I don't know of any RPGs like that. None that I'm aware of. And I think that would be a really cool idea because when you go into a battle, you can customize your combos, you can customize the type of fighting style you have. When you level up, you get new gear. For it, That would be a great idea. I think what he also said, means by that too is that, you know in Mortal Kombat, if you're fighting like a group of guys? Yeah. You fight one, and then he like jumps out or whatever. The next one jumps in, and yeah. you fight him. And yeah. so, and you could even do that and have multiple characters and then yeah, tag team. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's what he's he's kind of talking about. There. That sounds like it'd be a great game. I would love to play a game like that. And you know what? That brings me to my what to play. It's kind of like a really old school game. It's called Legends of Dragoon. I grew up on that game. It it is an RPG. It's almost like Final Fantasy, but the fighting style, when you get in there, it's like a combo system. So you can keep hitting the button, and you can do like a, almost like a 12 hit combo. But if you miss one, you end it, and you don't do as much damage. And I know that isn't really like a Mortal Kombat style fighting, but that was a really fun game. The graphics didn't really age well, but the story, and, the, and it was just a lot of fun playing that game. And the last comment that we chose was actually from Facebook. Of all Facebook. Places. We do look there. I know some of you think we probably don't, but we do. We check it out. This is proof. We do look there. This one is from Gribble. I don't think that's Gribble. his real name, but I left out his last name anyway in case it was, in case that was real. You know, just to be polite and not say the last name. So if your comment comes from Facebook, we'll leave out your last name, we'll just say your first name. Yeah. And um, what he said he wants is a sci-fi fantasy MMO with terror combat and a good story. I feel like good stories are kind of not really happening these days. Yeah, everybody's focused on graphics. Yeah, and the story is kind of like meh. I love stories. That's why I started <laughs> playing video games with stories. Yeah, it's kind of like if you feel like you want to read a book but you don't want to actually read a book, be like, play a video I game. I want to play a book. That's what yeah, I want to do. Play a video game with a really good story and then you'll kind of get that same satisfaction. Yeah. And um, sci fi fantasy MMO, I mean, sci fi fantasy, always fun. Yeah. Right? Terror fun. Combat. I chose this one because of the Terror Combat. Because yeah. I love the Terror Combat. It's, it's the only reason why I played Terror. Like, yeah. I didn't like how the game looked. I thought the characters made annoying sounds. And I didn't care about the story, but I loved the combat. That was the only thing that kept me, go kept me coming back, was the combat. Alright, I've never played Terra, and I don't know how many people out there have never played Terra. Why don't you explain the combat system for us? Well, it's action-based. It's not You don't like just click your target or tab to get to your target and hit numbers. 
you're actually, you know, like, left click is to swing your sword, and you jump out of the way, and the enemy, like, have very, like, minute signs of when they're going to do, like, a powerful attack, mm -hmm. and so you have to, like, get out of the way, because if you get hit once, you, your health is, like, almost gone, so you have to really make sure you're not getting hit, but still do a lot of damage in the process. So it's very engaging, very intense. There's huge bosses. I love huge bosses. That's why I'm a big fan of Shadow of the Colossus. Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, that, that game was cool. Big bosses, my name all over it. But yeah, the combat in Tower is so engaging and it's just awesome. I love it. Speaking of MMOs, Wildstar came out yesterday. Yep, the newest thing is Wildstar. That's what everyone's talking about. Wildstar. But what's so special about it? I don't know, a lot of people are saying it's WoW 2.0. Anyone who knows me knows that I was at one point exci excited for Wildstar. It, that excitement died when I played the beta. I played a lot of MMOs in my day, like I love MMOs, but they just take up too, my too much of my time now. And Wildstar looks interesting, I play it, I just don't really want to invest time into another MMO. I would play, I mean I always have to have an MMO in my life, it's just yeah. like this thing, like I always have to be playing at least one MMO. but um. Wildstar, I lost interest in it after playing the beta because there was nothing special about it. There was nothing new. It was just, you know, a rehash. They, they took everything good that was from other theme park MMOs and put it into one, which is a good idea if you like theme park MMOs. I'd say if you like theme park MMOs, go for it. And if you don't know what I mean by theme park, that means doing quests, you know, oh you're like, there's like quest hub areas, yeah. you're just like, oh, go kill five wolves, and you do that, and then you get your reward, and you I go to the next I was person. frustrated when I killed five wolves looking for five teeth. <laughs> they and all have teeth! None of them had teeth! I know, but... I like, had to kill 50 wolves to get five teeth. <laughs> but you know <laughs> they all have they, teeth. Who took all their teeth? Or like... Everybody else doing quests took the teeth with Or it's like, kill ten unicorns, or get ten unicorns. unicorn horns, okay? Yeah. You kill, and you can see they all have horns, right? Yeah. You have to kill like 30 of them to get 10 horns. It's like, yeah. why? That's annoying. I don't like It is that. annoying. But yeah, so that's like the, the base idea of what a theme park MMO is. And I like, I need sandbox. I can't do theme park any, anymore. Yeah. I've done it for so long. I'm sick of it. It's just so monotonous and brain numbing and just... I can't do you it. You know the problem I had with, them, um, with MMOs is I would stay up all night. I'd just be staring at the computer and I would not blink. Like, I know a lot of you gamers out there that you do this, you just, you're just you so into it and you forget to blink. Especially if you play Terra. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not blinking. And your eyes get so dry and you'll get eye strain, you get headaches, and it just hurts. Like, I used to keep a bottle of painkillers on my desk. What? every, And I would have to take painkillers every day. You took painkillers to play games? Yeah. It, I suffered from my gaming. Oh my goodness. And, and that's really that. not good for your liver. It's not good at all. It's not good I for you. And so I did, I used gunners for a while. Uh, Those things look ridiculous. I felt I looked pretty silly in them, but I was, yeah. I really wanted my headaches to go away, right? Yeah, did they work? They worked to an extent, but I mean, if you're wearing headphones or a headset, it can be pretty uncomfortable. Yeah. And um, so I was like, I, this isn't comfortable. I need something so I can lose my eye strain, but not have to wear something. So then a friend suggested Flux to me. So I tried Flux. Headaches, gone, don't have to wear anything, don't look silly. And it, it's amazing, like, I don't have to, I don't get headaches anymore. I don't get any headaches anymore. Yeah, I've actually been using Flux for about a week now since I've been working for Tech Syndicate. And it's got like a weird yellow color when it activates, I've noticed that. But you don't even notice it after like five to ten minutes, like you're playing yeah. a game. And... Like when it first like kicks in, you'll be like, whoa, this looks really yellow all of a sudden. Yeah. But like, just let it go for a few minutes, and then your eyes adjust, and you don't even notice it. Anymore. And I have noticed that my, um, it's helping my eyes at night. Like I don't get my eyes don't get as dry, and they don't hurt yeah, as much. Yeah, it's it's way better for your eyes. So it's free. Like gunners are super expensive, but mm -hmm. Flux is free, and you can just go to what, what was their slogan again? Just get Flux. Just get Flux. <laughs> That's where you get it. It's yeah. free. It works great. I've been using it. You just it, put in your um, time code or your time yeah, you zone. Put in, you put in your, your your zip code. Yeah. And then it calculates when the sun sets, and then that's when it really kicks in and lowers the blue I think it kicks levels. in around eight p.m. Is yeah. That right? yeah. Yeah. Depending on you know where you are and where the sun sets, and it just lowers the blue levels. That's why things will look yellow when it first turns on. But your eyes adjust, and it, it, you won't even notice it anymore, and it's great. So yeah. if you're a headache sufferer from eye strain playing video games, just get. In the last episode, we asked you guys what games you wanted. And this week, we want to know what games were you looking forward to that got canceled before they were released? 
heartbreaking. Yeah, right? there, I, I know that feel all too well. And we want to know what games you guys were looking forward to that you were so excited for, and then they just never happened. They just disappeared. It's happened to me. Has it happened to you? Yes. And we'll tell you in the next episode. So, see you guys next time. Cheers. cheers. You don't have a drink. You can't cheers me. Exactly. What are you doing? One drop. <laughs>